we'll swiftly move um, Michael on. Uh, I'll introduce uh, Michael from Data Art. So what Michael's going to do is we've got well we've got a a, a real live running system now, fingers crossed, and now Michael's going to run some services on top of it. So Michael, over to you. Hello everyone. The shout. <laughs> the shout. Okay. Hello everyone. Just very quickly about data art, we're a little bit different. We're not a product company. We're a consulting and professional services organization. Uh, we're a global company, been in business over 18 years, have over 1,500 developers and consultants, and have specialty business practices. Obviously, telco, Internet of Things is one of them, financial services, hospitality, and media. That's it from the sales side. We had just an introduction uh, to the Juju environment, and so we made a decision for this demo to keep it timely. We're not going to redeploy. We're seeing one being deployed. At the end of this, I'll give a link. This entire demonstration is available in GitHub and in the store, so we would encourage you to take it, play with it, use it. If there's any questions, please come and see me. I'll be around uh, for the day. So the Juju interface, as we just looked at before, pretty straightforward. This is a fully deployed environment, or a picture of a fully deployed environment that we have. So you see the connections, you see the relationships, and I'll go through these in a little more detail when we get to them. One of the pieces that's new, or wasn't talked about before, is a Mesos cluster and Marathon, which is a management tool for Mesos. It's a micro architecture, um, and what it does is it takes a container, turns it, and puts out a cluster, and then all the resources are flattened within it. So when you have a value-added services or, or, or an application that has individual constraints on it, in ours, we have a call consumer, and we start sending millions of SMS messages to it during our loading, it gets very busy. The rest of the architecture doesn't. So why would you want to scale up and run multiple virtual machines, which you know, costs money in the cloud, if you already have resources that are available? So inside a small environment or a micro environment. So what we're going to see in demo, and I'll take you through it, is in this environment, everything's flat. There's a total of three CPUs that's currently available. There's some Remy that's available in the environment. And as the demand increases, we'll see how it automatically adds new instances and scales up the environment as well. It's horizontal and vertical scaling of a telco app. So our application that we'll be showing today is teleconferencing on demand. So I saw a few people with their mobile phones. Uh, later on in the demo, I'll be inviting you to join the conference call. We'll go through it. We'll also, in the, in the running environment, deploy another application while it's currently running that will go through, capture the recording of the conference, and for everyone who joins in, we'll actually send you an SMS message when we're done with a link to the recorded call. It's a pretty simple application. There's a couple pieces that, uh, if you will, we did put together rather ad hoc. One of them is the call recording software. We actually just uh, imitate another user. They join the conference first and record everything. That actually lets us make sure everyone who joins the call, even if you join in late, when you get the recording, you get the full call. So you'll see me manually start the call recording. The other thing you manually see me do is start the load testing as we just saw before, we'll be simulating 2 million SMS messages to our call processing application. And you'll see the load go quite up rather quickly by design for the demonstration. You also see in our monitoring solution, we put together a very quick monitoring solution. Zabbix would be a great replacement for it if you're thinking of doing something like this in production. So the monitoring that comes with this is something we just put together strictly for the demo and to be able to so everyone can see it very easily. It's pretty clear when we're loading things really fast. Here are the links uh, for both GitHub and the, uh, and the Charm Store. So you can go ahead and we encourage people to take it and uh, play with it. Key thing about scaling up, pretty, there's a lot of technologies to do that. And before I get into this, scaling down is just as important. If you go and leave 50 or 500 or 5,000 extra virtual machines running in the cloud, you're paying for it. And so part of the demonstration, which I hope we'll have time for, is when we stop the load testing and we take off the extra service, this, the entire environment will scale down automatically as well, both inside the Mesos cluster and inside the Docker container. Okay. 
Um, will not be slow. So let's go. So let's start looking at the demo. So we saw the environment. A couple key components. I mentioned our monitor. I'm just going to bring that up. Very, very simple, as I said. And please keep, you'll be looking down here on our call consumer area. That's the area that we're looking at. And in the Mesos cluster, there are two, er two things that we want to look at. The first is the entire Mesos cluster, which you'll see we currently have. Let me scroll down. Three CPUs, two were used in the environment, so please keep that in mind as we start the demo. And look at the marathon interface, which is just management for Mesos. And here you'll see the applications that are actually running. So very simple teleconference application, straightforward. What I'm going to do now is start the loading. And here we're starting to simulate 2 million calls, or 2 million SMSs into the conference. I don't want to keep switching back and forth, so we'll do the loading, and then as we do the loading and it's still running, we'll start the conference. There's a lot of context switches here otherwise. So one of the things we see here very quickly, I mentioned if you look down, you see we're at 63% of the loading of this. Again, this is a great, great place for Zabbix to go in. Marathon has already detected and has now just finished deploying an instance. We've gone from one to two that quickly. It's about 25 seconds on that. So you don't, we don't have to deploy an entire new virtual machine. We had resources available. Mesos will update right here. We can see we've now consumed two and a half up from two CPUs. In the Juju environment, and in the container, it's going to take a little bit lo while longer to react because we're actually going to be spawning a new virtual machine. The system now says, okay, I'm getting close to my resource limits. So let me not only put a micro instance available, keep the application running, give it the resources it needed, but maybe you're going to need more. So it's going to, as we're seeing right here, yep, it's starting with the pending unit. So it's already started spinning up another VM. It'll put the software on it and configure it. But what's key is the application already has the resources that, it's need, that it needs when it's running. So this is a scaling up and out, if you will. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start that call recorder. One of the things I want to point out about the Juju environment, which we really like, is we're running in a cloud. There's IP addresses. They're all over the place. They may change. You might migrate from one platform to another. Inside the Juju environment, all I need to know is the name of the application I want to connect to. And I think yeah, we can see it up on the screen. So I just want to talk to the conference recorder. I don't know what its IP address is. Juju takes care of managing that because it's been deployed by Juju. And simply named Start Recording. So instead of going full screen, I'll just leave this up. If anyone wants to send an SMS, you'll get an immediate callback on your phone. And I'm going to show you this right here on my phone. I'm going to use a SIP phone. Oops. Yeah, note the, uh, the number that uh, Michael's dialing is not the same number that you'll dial because yes. he's going internally. I am going internally. And this is a good point, a place to... Uh, plug the, uh, the provider of the number, this number that we're using here, actually is not a true phone one. Uh, we found an undocumented uh, issue with, uh, with the true phone numbers. Um, and so, uh, very kindly, uh, Alex Kinch, who's, Alex, are you here in the room? There he is at the back there from Zyron. Uh, plugged the gap, he said, I've got some numbers here, use one of these. And so we're very grateful to Alex and Zyron wholesale um, provider uh, for providing us with a, a number which works in this demo. So yeah. thanks for that, Alex. Are we ready for people to start SMSing? Yes, no, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to get my phone because I'm going to have a go at this as well. Where's my phone? Oh, 
Oops. Is, is anybody on the conference call already? Yeah, we've got a couple. Yeah, yeah. it's working. So I'm the slow one, of course. And what's amusing is that on my phone here, I'm getting a whole swathe of Slack notifications telling me that you're all joining the conference call. There we go. So the conference is running and being recorded. Again, hopefully my screen is up there. I don't know what it is. Something had to break in the demo, and apparently my screencasting is broken. There we go. We'll leave it like that. So the conference is running. It's recording. There's nothing overly magical or interesting about that, um, other than get the call back. What I'm going to do now, though, and in the interest of time, trying to catch us up a few minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a new value-added service in the environment, which is going to drop the call and send the recording to everything. You should get an SMS and a link. So a couple things here to show. Again, Marathon's running at two. We now have three instances deployed of this versus the two that were done. We have scaled up. When I drop it, I'm just going to connect it in. You see it builds the other relationships dynamically. And I commit it, which is the same thing as executing it. So the resources are now being connected, redefined, and it is running. If we come over here to Mesos, sorry, Marathon, We'll see a new application gets deployed in a few seconds. It's drop conference. Then the conference will end up terminating for everyone, and you'll get your link. So here's our drop conference that's now running. It's deploying. You see it's pretty quick in the environment to do that. So once it starts running the conference again, we'll get it back. What also happens is we'll start being able to scale down. So again, you saw a new instance in about 30 seconds. And then the environment. Yeah, we're rapidly running out of time here, Michael. Just so we're now running about nine minutes behind. Well, someone chewed into about six so minutes of my yeah, time. Sebastian, wherever so. you are, get yourself ready to get up here. There, and it's running, and at least on mine, hopefully on everyone else's, you can see that I've gotten a message saying thank you for joining Data Art. And then there's a link to the call that you can download and listen to. So that being said, we will now terminate the loading, destroy the application, scales it down. And I don't think we need to show that, but if anyone wants to see it, I'll keep the screen up and you can find me. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Michael. Thank you, everyone.